Okay. Welcome to the George Lynch Hunting Podcast, brought to you by Legendary Gear, the game called company that is legend by design. So what ammo are you using this year for turkey season? Are you a hero or a zero? Apex Ammo, we'll learn about it today with one of the my close friends. I've known this guy for, I mean, for years. He had his first goose in Michigan. His, the acclimates behind this young man, he's a, a prodigy takes when you have great parents and great upbringing, but uh, I'm proud to call him my friend, folks, Mr. Kyle Jones. How you doing, buddy? Man, I'm great. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, man, we could, we could really, we could probably talk for a good 45 minutes to an hour talking about the hunts, you know, and, and the discussions we've had since I was, you know, I've known you since I was 14 years old. So, uh, and you know, like you said, you I shot my first goose with Adam, man, we could really talk about that. We could talk <laughs> about goose call designs from back in the day, gut, duck call designs, leg bands. And, uh, man, there's, there's a lot of stuff. All I, know is I, wish, I would like to have been a, a, a mouse in the, in the shell bag watching him hunt back then. When you're two <laughs> young kids. Oh man. Oh yeah. That was, uh. That was that was a fun day. We were hunting, you know, we were hunting by uh by Jackson, Michigan. And um yeah, we only shot one goose that day, but by golly, that was my that was my goose. And uh it was it was pretty awesome. It was a pretty awesome. Deal. There's been a lot of geese since and it's all <laughs> to you calling. That's a and, fact. Um, that's a fact. So anyway, I mean your acclimates, I mean, a lot of people know you in the calling industry, and, and and that's what I will say. I've always talked about work ethics, and dude, without a doubt, you were the, the prime example, great uh, a, a representation of what hard work does and staying with it. And, you know, you've never heard a bad word of Kyle Jones. You've always, you know, you've never ca- created any drama with yourself. You've been respectful and stuff, but... You know, we know that you're world champ in, in the duck. And I'll tell you what, I was talking with Todd Copley when we had Todd Copley. He's a good friend. He did a podcast talking about cut down calling. And Todd was telling me, you know, he was listening to uh, the world duck on, on headphones. And he says, man, I'll tell you who's going to be lighting a fire and be watching the next few years is Kyle Jones. Yeah. He said he could run. But he's doing good in that duck call. So Todd, that's, a you know, coming from Todd Copley, that's a, a great re, uh, compliment. Oh yeah, I mean, I watched him win his champion of champions uh, a couple years ago, and he was, he was there was fire coming out of that duck call when he was blowing it. So it was it was pretty awesome. But just talking with you the other day, I mean, you sit here. So I mean, everybody knows this guy can run a call. He's the a goose call king. He's and now he's into the duck call. You're a water. We've been a waterfowl guy, and you you know here recently you've gotten into the deer hunting, the bow hunting, you know, and and oh man, poor guy, he's got that itch. It's, it, bow hunting is one of those itches you just can't seem to scratch enough you yeah. know especially you know living out here in Iowa when I first moved out here guys were you know I lived right on the waterfowl refuge but you know you and I both being from Michigan and the hunting pressure we could have great bucks in Michigan and there's been great bucks and it takes food genetics but yeah. the third thing it takes most is time and that's a sad thing is you know the multiple deer tags and and the pressure I think uh, Joe Robinson there our biologist told us that like 67 or 77 percent of the deer harvested in michigan were a year and a half deer so yeah. you know you, it, it, the fruit's being picked before it's ripe so yeah. i moved out here to iowa and, and started seeing you know huge bucks and um even right where i lived and i would remember one time sitting in a tree stand right behind my place which is borders a refuge and in my head, there must have been for an hour, an hour and a half, flying over the head, which is lying of mallards. And I remember laughing and guys were telling me, I bet you Lynch is just smoking the waterfowl out there. And it's like, dude, I never got out in the field. I was in a tree stand. Yep. Yep. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't blame you. I think, you know, the waterfowl stuff, I mean, granted, we all love it. We love it to death. I mean, you, you make calls out of it. I do calling competitions, but at the same time, you know, man, I'd rather be out deer hunting than, uh, than doing, than doing, uh, the duck and the goose hunting, you know? So it's, it's just one of those, there's, there's give and take with it. Well, it's kind of tough when, you know, down today, I didn't have it when I was younger, but I've gotten hooked on trail cam. So when, especially when you're out here and you're putting them out, it's like, I can't wait. It, it is like an addiction 
because yeah. you know any day you could have a booner or a 200 inch deer and, and i've had some huge deer on my camera so the camera was pretty tough when the camera um yeah. you know catch that big 200 inch deer 180 inch deer and you're pretty you know it, it gives you more incentive getting out there i remember gene winslow talking to him one time a, a you know traditional bow hunter um he said you know before trail cams that you had to go by sign and rubs and stuff but the trail cams came along and he said it really made it easy to pass up a pretty good buck when you know you had a giant in that area yeah. too but you know kind of going on further we're getting right coming up uh and hardcore in the turkey hunting and you are not, also not just a waterfowl you are a turkey killing maniac now and um You've traveled on in part of your career now, kind of with your hunting and everything between waterfowl and turkey hunting. You are now working with Apex Ammo. And yep. uh, I'll tell you, my friends, uh, Jason Pollock, who is one of the best turkey hunters, he's a 12 state uh, calling champion. But I got to work with him back when I was with the outdoor group. And Jason is from New York, but I'll tell you what, he's one of uh, the best turkey meat hunters that I've ever hunted with. I mean, he can yep. make turkeys do things. And he swears by the apex ammo. Yeah. You know, he says that it's just, um, but anyway, why don't you talk about that? You know, moving to apex and, and what's going on with that in the Turkey world. Yeah. So, you know, that's, um, that's been, uh, I I've been shooting it for a couple of years now. So it's been since 2018, I guess, man, that's, that is a couple of years um, 2018, I started shooting Apex for the first time. And that was just when they started getting into the waterfowl side of things. I had heard of, you know, tungsten super shot. That's kind of the, the rage nowadays with, with turkey hunting. Um, the TSS. And, yes, TSS. So, you know, uh, Apex, they were the first people. Now, guys have been, hand, no, don't get me wrong, we're not the first people to ever come up with TSS. That's that's not what I'm I'm saying. We were the first company to uh, present it and package it and put it together for uh, the general public to be able to purchase and get it into retail stores and and build a dealer base and everything like that. There's been guys hand loading TSS for 10, 15, 20 years um, in you know in their yards and their basements and or in their in their garages and basements and stuff like that you know so but you know the benefit of the the TSS is it is over twice the density of like steel and bismuth right granted most people had been shooting um you know tungsten blends with uh lead shot at turkeys um and now with the tungsten super shot you are you are shooting the most lethal and heaviest weighing metal that you can possibly shoot. So it's providing, you know, with the extremely dense patterns, extremely hard hitting, heavy, you know, heavy kinetic energy, uh, a ton of kinetic energy when it, when it hits its target. Um, and that's just the benefit of tungsten. Now we break it down into tungsten super shot. Well, we're able to shoot smaller sized shot, right and still have the same hitting like the same kinetic energy uh you know 18.1 grams per cc lead is like right around 11.1 11.2 grams per cc so you know all the guys you know and i'll revert back to the duck hunting guys like the duck hunting guys especially the older the old guys the older guys are like man i i used to love shooting yeah, you see the old guys Easy yeah. on the old <laughs> So, so, you know, we're, so now we're, we're putting, you know, we're able to shoot turkeys with number nine shot. Now that might sound crazy, but it hits with the same power as a lead number five now. Okay. Now, instead of having a hundred and, you know, 75 ish pellets in a single shotgun shell, three inch shotgun shell, our load we released in February has a thousand ninety six pellets in a single mm -hmm. shotgun shell. So you're wow. talking the heaviest hitting stuff, the densest pattern stuff. Like it, it just all around. It, it is you are putting in your gun the most lethal and ethically, you know, killing. I mean, that's what it is when we're hunting and we are killing an animal. It is the most ethical and humane way to kill an animal. It's just like you with 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 your bow and arrow setup, 
right? You want the arrow setup that is best for obviously best for your bow, best for your shooting. But what is most ethical when it's when it comes to killing a deer? Absolutely. You know, that's what we're there. That provides less. Exactly. And that's like, man, we get uh, three and a half inches of penetration with a number one, number nine pellet in ballistics gel at 50 yards. Right. So if you're, you know, uh, we want to shoot you and I both we're waterfowl hunters uh, and we're turkey hunters, we're deer hunters. We want to shoot something within that 30 yard range. Right. So it's just like, you know, if you're shooting them with TSS, it is that you're getting complete pass throughs on a turkey and granted you're shooting a turkey's head. So you're getting complete pass throughs on the head, the neck area. And it's just as quick and as humane as pos- as you possibly can get. So, you know, without sounding, you know, too salesy, that's kind of what apex started brought to the table um with the tungsten super shot line to the general public now there's you know there's several other companies that are that have followed suit they're they're successful in what they do um but then we also you know we got into the waterfowl line of things the upland bird side of things as well so it's kind of a you know we're 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 navigating those waters as it as they come but turkey you know, Turkey is definitely our, our, our strong suit. Um, and you know, waterfowl is, is coming right up alongside, but it's Turkey season. So let's, let's, let's talk Turkey some more, man. I'm saying, you know, what's so cool about that is that it, cause you know, I'm one of those old guys you're talking about. So back <laughs> in the day, um, Turkey gun, you know, there was 10 gauge Turkey guns. Some guys had a 10 gauge Turkey gun. And uh, then the three and a half, 12 came out and everybody praised that because it had the long shot string. But I'll tell you what, there was nothing that would rock your world and shoot my 870 with a three and a half turkey load. And I mean, uh, we took a video one time of uh, me shooting and I had one of those true glow sights, red dots on it. And yep. I, <laughs> lens cap is open and we, we've got the, the film right there and I shoot the three and a half load and you see me rock, but the lens cap actually closed and open back up with so much recoil. Oh, and man. Oh, yeah. So what I see the beauty here, even for myself, not because I'm older or anything else, but man, when you're out there running and gunning and we're trying to carry everything, the worst thing, I don't know if guys are carrying a heavy gun. Oh, my yeah. gosh. When I'm trying to go and at the end of the day, that gun, you know, we're shooting that carrying a heavy 10 gauge. But the, 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 the advantage here I see is so much is that when we try to get young kids in there, you know, uh, trying to get them into turkey hunting. I'm so excited because you and I had talked. I have my dad's old Remington. I got his 28 gauge and a uh, Model 11 Remington. Both it's a collector set. Trap shooting has full choke. Beautiful gun. One's a 28 and the 410. And I'm going to go out and, and shoot one with the 410 this year. Yeah. And it's, it's exciting to know. And I want to film that and I want to show guys. And, you know, here's such a light gun, but it, it, the uh, advantage of taking young people and not just the young boys, the young girls now who can sit yeah. there and hand them a 410. And you know that when they get in you know, under 30 yards and especially to put a some type of shooting stick, but, you know, they're going to whack that turkey. And feel oh, yeah. confident, but not worse than taking a youngin out there and get them all excited and have them shoot and lose a bird. And yeah. it really, I mean, the, the depression and, and frustration that comes into kid. You don't want to. You want their first opportunity to be very uh, successful and exciting. And yeah. I just see, to me, that is the biggest advantage coming along is being able to shoot that lighter gun and allowing other people into the hunting uh, with the kids, especially. You know, with that, it, it gives you uh, reassurance, you know, like you've you more than likely like say you were taking a little nine year old kid out turkey hunting and you got a box of 410. You're going to go shoot that 410 before they do just to see what it patterns like. Right. So you're like, oh, I That's know right. I know what that gun patterns. I know that the capability of a bird hung up at 40 yards uh, with a 410 is very doable and is very, that's a very dead Turkey, you know? And then, you know, the kid is going to get there and they're going to shoot the gun a little bit and then hopefully be successful. But like what you touched on earlier, you know, if a kid misses or loses a Turkey, uh, a, that's, that's extremely defeating, but they're also, you know, they feed off of your energy. Right. And they're seeing, you know, they, if you're disappointed, they can sense the disappointment in your voice that's, that's heartbreaking for a kid, you know, and, and they, you might try to hide it, but you just, 
are really avoiding that altogether. Granted, you know, if they flat out miss, they flat out miss. That's part of turkey hunting. I missed a lot of turkeys last year. Uh, but you know, that, that reassurance there that you have a, you have a small sub gauge gun with an extremely lethal load. It's a great combination for young hunters, boys and girls. And even, you know, if you wanted to take grandma, grandpa out, you know, say like grandma, grandpa wanted to go turkey hunting again, they're in their eighties, nineties. And, uh, they, they 10, 15, 20 years ago, you had to take a 20 gauge, 20 gauge would be the small, like 20 gauge would be the small, uh, option for you, you know, a smaller right. sub gauge option. A lot of times you're shooting the 12 gauge Magnum shells and it, they just couldn't do it back then. And now they have the capability of a, a 410, a 28 gauge, 20 gauge, 16, you know, it's, it's, ex, it, it's extremely beneficial for the entire world of hunting to incorporate the older generation, but also introduce the new generation. And that's a great point, Kyle, because that's one of the things that I actually, in the older years, you know, I've, I've shot enough turkey, shot enough geese, shot enough, you shoot the deer. I really enjoy uh, taking, like going hunting with my wife and and guiding for her or guiding for a family member or guiding, you know, I'm going to take some Amish out this year who never killed a turkey and I'm going to get him a turkey. But the cool thing yeah. about this, and actually what I'm preaching to is guys my age and, and guys who have hunted, even seasoned hunters your age, that because of this, you know, you got a 410, you got a 20 gauge, you know, if you know some kids in your church that don't have, they're not into hunting, you know, just, you got, I got the gun, I got the ammo, I got the decoys to get kids involved in that, you know, allowing them to shoot that lighter shot. And if they, it isn't, you know, an experience, they definitely remember getting their, their jaw rumbled when they shoot a big gun. But when they shoot that light load and be able to see, you know, and, and be successful, we need to get so many more kids into hunting to get our numbers back up and Absolutely. not lose the kids. And I, that's I, what was I, that, I was that kid in church, man. I was that kid in church that a guy, a guy had the guns. He had the fishing poles, you know, my dad didn't hunt. So I was that kid that was, you know, just played baseball, travel baseball. And as soon as I got into hunting, I quit baseball, everything, you know, and yeah. now look, I'm full time in the hunting industry and, it's just, you know, you never, you could think about the, the possibilities of endless are, are endless when it comes to influence, right? And, and your capability of doing that. So why not, if you've got the tools in the tool shed to be able to do that, to shed that light on hunting, do it. You know, you, you only get That's so many opportunities too. So, uh, yeah, it's the apex, you know. So let me ask you, Kyle, somebody's going to get in, they're new, they're wanting to get into uh, turkey hunting, and let's just say it's average Joe, and he says, you know what, I'm going to get me a 20 gauge, I read about everybody, you know, that it's, you know, I loved, I would love to go from my 12 to get a 20 gauge uh, to turkey hunt, so if you're the, the average Joe and he's, you know, 30 yards and he wants to get 20 gauge, what turkey load do you recommend to that guy? Man, most popular? I would say, you know, our flagship load is a, is a 20 gauge shell. Um, and you know, not, we, we could get, uh, you'll find that the Turkey, the Turkey world can be just as technical, if not more as like the bow hunting archery world of whitetails, you know, I'm sure you've well, seen just, that, yeah. I'm sure you've seen it, but you know, say you got 20 gauge, what, what 20 gauge are you shooting, George? I got the, uh, the new Savage, uh, okay. 220. I'm excited okay. with the accuracy with the scope on it all right we're I'm, so I'm you're, you're a little bit you're a little bit in depth here all right so we'll go remington 870 <laughs> 20 gauge uh full choke put a full choke in it and go and buy you know the apex gt20 number nine that's our flagship load it's ounce and five eighths payload um and it's going about 1190 feet per second um but you're getting almost 750 700, 730 pellets per shotgun shell okay wow. um and you know that's you know straight bare bones out of the box if you wanted to get into different choke tubes there's different constrictions and all that stuff but we'll just stick with full choke right now this is about as basic as you want and you would be successful um obviously i try to tell folks you know i 
my my max distance on a on a turkey is going to be about 40 yards you know have i shot one further yes but am i going to promote that no um i know with a 20 gauge with the capability one stepped out at 40 45 yards uh i'm not, i'm not going to have any problem taking that shot with a 870 20 gauge with a full choke um now you know obviously you and i both we love getting them in as close as they possibly can but you're going to throw you got to keep in mind you're going to throw about a softball-ish size pattern out to about 20, 25 yards, all right? So it's, you know, maybe a little bit bigger than the softball. And then at 40 yards, you're talking about just about a large basketball, okay? So, I mean, you're talking there is a couple hundred pellets about that size going in there. It's almost like you're shooting a beehive, but that would be the most basic as I could get um, with, with that. You know, if – if you say you got some states, I know some states don't allow shot size smaller than eights. Uh, Canada, you can't shoot anything smaller than a seven. Um, so, you know, if if you got something where you know you, your state in particular won't allow you to shoot something smaller than a number eight or number nine, I'd go. Oh, we got a seven and a half as well, which is great, uh, great there too. So, a little bit bigger pellet. Not as many pellets in it per shell, but it's still awesome. Still going to provide a, a phenomenal pattern uh, and just absolutely just pack a punch. I mean, like the number one, the number one uh, comment we get when somebody switches from lead to TSS is, man, that turkey didn't flop. That did not flop. It, I've heard that, yeah. you, you know, and you go, you go up, grab it and it starts to, you know, nerves kind of kick in. It flaps a little bit, but like, you shoot that turkey, a lot of times it's sitting there just, you know, with lead or with other shot, it's sitting there, you know, flopping on the ground. And, man, with that that TSS, it's just like a sack of potatoes just laying there, man. And that's it, – it's crazy. It is absolutely Well, let crazy. me ask you this. That TSS, that being heavier than lead, do you think that the heavier shot would actually probably hold form uh, better to, to the shot, the uniformity of shot? would be better with that a little heavier than over lead or lead yeah i would say providing yeah pattern densities tr uh added with you know the amount of shot this type of wad we're using um is is just going to provide an excellent pattern um for that now with you know lead and lead and bismuth especially you really have to really keep it tight right um, with, with tungsten super shot, you can actually get away with shooting a little bit more open choke. Um, you know, like with, we'll get into, I mean, this is again, you know, we're getting into the technical side of chokes and constrictions, right? A lot of guys are shooting to say they're shooting a Winchester SXP, uh, NWTF, uh, 20 gauge, right? It's the pump Winchester with the, with the pistol grip on it. And they're shooting a 20 gauge. A lot of those guys, if they were shooting an older lead shot, number fives, number six, they're wanting to shoot like a like a 550 constriction choke. All right. Um, now with you with bismuth, you I would probably personally I wouldn't shoot bismuth out of turkey at all, period. But you get into like your lead, you want to keep it tighter. You start opening up with the TSS, you want a a uh, 560 constriction would be very tight for TSS. Mm -hmm. Now we want to get maybe into like 562. Our guys at Indian Creek, they make great 562 choke. 565 is good, even into a 570, right? So five, you know, 550 is about as tight as you can get with a 20 gauge. Um and 560. Yeah, or 550 is about as tight in a choke tube that they are offer on the market. Um that is great. And so, you know, like you get into the 560, um, we, you get a, a 560 to 565 choke, then you're, you're right in the money where you're, you know, you're throwing some pretty mean patterns. You're talking, you know, 360 to 410, 415 pellets in a, 15 to 10 inch circle at 40 yards. So, I mean, that's, that's what you're getting. That's at. Lethal, my friend. Yes. Yeah. Lethal. I'm excited. 
I can't wait with my 20 gauge and, and Diane and I both are excited to, you know, we're going to film and whack some turkeys. I'm Good. so excited with the Apex and, and uh, you know, again, about educating other people about, you know, it, 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 there's a reason we use it, but explain and, and you just did a terrific job of why we use it. I don't want someone to say, you know, you're just, why do you use it? Well, I want to explain why I use it. I use something yep. because I think it makes me helps me. It's just a tool. It's in my bag. And I think we owe it to the critters we hunt to shoot the best broadhead, to shoot the best arrow and to shoot the best shotgun shell to lethally that's what it's all about is reducing them to possession you know ethically yeah and i do like you say i do like the one shot kill yeah and um, i mean it, it it's just one of those you know there's there's been a you know for the past few years there's a couple guys you know you get a, you it's the internet right you get all kinds of different people there's a lot of people out there you know tss has kind of gotten this you know persona or stigma that i shoot tss because i want to shoot a turkey at a far distance granted absolutely yeah these guys they're killing a turkey at 70 80 90 yards they like telling people about it personally i just me i don't think i did my job if i'm having to shoot it that far uh but you know that's kind of the persona and the stigma that it's got and you know yeah will it do it yeah we're not going to promote it we're not going to talk about it but we want to shoot and kill. We're hunters. We, we, we kill an animal, right? You and I both know this. We care an awful lot more about those animals too. You know, if, when it comes down to it, we really care an awful lot about those animals and we have a ton of a tremendous amount of respect for them. We want to put them out as quickly and as humanely as possible. You know, we don't. Yeah. My, my old, uh, adage is that i i hunt or i i kill because i hunt i don't yep. hunt to kill yeah and 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 i got pretty vocal on social media when the guys were like you said they get out there and they're talking about shooting waterfowl you know how they can extend and shoot you know yep. 70 and 80 yards and i don't want to mention it you know what, what competitor it is but i am verbally i get on there and i said you know what i'm all about ethic you know being ethical and anything that you can shoot can help you but if you only using this so you think you can extend uh, the range, number one, you're taken away from, you know, what this is all about and about calling the things in. None of us are starving. And I will let you know this, that it doesn't matter what shotgun you shell you're using, sky busting is sky busting, no yep. matter what you call it. I'm all for using it. Dude, we've got, and and this is this is where I'm at with it too. And you know, George, we've got this amazingly powerful platform called social media, right? YouTube, podcasts, everything like that. Education is so easy to find. Quality education is a little bit harder to find. Credible, especially. You've seen it with, especially in the waterfowl industry. There's not there's a lot of people wanting to give out information. A lot of people that aren't giving out credible information. But we have an opportunity to teach people, right? Provide this free education on why and how to finish ducks, geese, turkeys closer. Why are we promoting taking further shots? You know, that shouldn't be even a question. We should be utilizing and educating our followings and viewers and, and friends and families and, and the next, especially that next generation on teaching them how, Hey man, Here's how to get those ducks to literally, you know, in a no-win situation, just put the, put the drop, drop on an elevator right down, you know, and shoot them five feet above your decoys, right? We should be teaching that instead of putting on the side of a box, longer distance, you know, extended range. And it's like, man, that's not, that's, that's not what it's, that's not what it should ever come to, you know? Absolutely. That's a hundred percent agree. And, and that's what I'm saying is that uh, I'm, a, you know, I've always kind of considered myself above average shot, but I've had a lot of practice and even I've, you know, and I've hunted with some great hunters in my life and even great hunters when you're shooting ducks and it's getting fast and stuff like that, you know, not having a good, I've, I've shot a lot of ducks where that dog's trying to get, you thought you hit him good and that duck will swim and all of a sudden dive. And he, you know, he, 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 how many cripples that we still end up, you know, because a duck, you can't hit every duck with the whole, you know, but if I yeah. can hunt with something that I'm just shooting still within that ethical range, and maybe if I'm not quite on yet, I still have enough of the, uh, 
uh, you know, power and, and to hit that with, with less BBs and still kill that duck where he's, there's no cripples. That is to me is what my goal is to get him in, but also yeah. to finish it without cripples. You know? Absolutely. And that's, and that's why I think that, that's my promotion with apex. <laughs> that and, and that's kind of been uh, something that people like, they don't really think about, but th- when you, when you, tell them or talk to them about it, they start to think and they're like, man, that's true. Right. The biggest thing that we see and granted, like our product is a premium product, premium products. They're not cheap. All right. Guys are like, well, I can buy six to seven cases of my own shotgun shells or like of the cheap, you know, steel standard steel. Right. I'm like, man, but if you add up the amount of birds you're shooting out on the water, you're almost getting even right with something oh, that out. like so just so you know like our mossy oak we just released a, a blend um it's a number three steel with a number eight tss shot three inch steel wow. uh, or three inch load 12 gauge 232 pellets in one single shell you're shooting at a duck or a goose right at 40 yards with a mallard uh we did it on ballistics gel number eight tss is passing through the duck right wow so you can't tell me if you're finishing your ducks and you get them in 25 30 yards oh you know your buddy shot the ones in the decoys you're shooting at the one getting out boom 39 yards 40 yards that is the most at lethal shotgun shotgun shell on out there right because you're i mean you're getting those pass-throughs on those ducks and geese at 40 yards right so you're completely passing through vitals, bones, wings, neck, everything. Um so you're shooting less at ducks on the water is what I'm trying is what I'm saying. So you you know you're going to shoot, you know, two to three additional shots per per volley. I've seen it. I've seen it happen. There's guys that are shooting extra to especially honkers on the water, right? Honkers on the water. going to say sea ducks uh, you get into like big water, um, like Columbia River, Mississippi River, Missouri River. You get in those big water scenarios where it's like, man, I, we got to we got to keep shooting at that duck because it needs to die. So the dog can go get it without getting sucked out into the current like oh. that stuff. It's, uh, you know, you you take away all of that right then when you're starting to shoot a quality shotgun shell yeah it's it's a little bit pricier but at the same time it's still going to even out you know it's still going to level out yeah you brought up a great point you're going to use less shells and how many times that i've been and watched it with guys with that that's something about a crippled goose on the water (laughs) and i'll see guys shoot five six shells yep trying to finish it and then that goose still get to the other side so the dog's got to crawl and, and find him and it, you know i've seen that and and you're absolutely right you know it's like looking at good clothing and you know you always want to make sure there's a reason you're paying for what you're getting and it's always sometimes it's better to buy the better gasoline because you're getting more miles per gallon instead of the cheap and i believe that with with the shotgun shells as well you know and i think that the guys here's another thing to think about too that i would rather pay less money and shoot an 870 and then take that extra money to buy me good ammo that yeah. I think I would just as success or more successful with that. Cause I can shoot that 870 really good. Well, you know Jordan, that, that, that that's, a whole nother, that's a whole nother can of worms that we're going to, we're going to open up here. It's like, man, like what bibs you got that you wear in waterfowl season, you wear Sitka Hudson's, right? Yeah. Those aren't cheap. Those aren't cheap. Oh. The jacket, it's not cheap, but you're going to stay warm and you're going to stay dry. The gun you shoot, that's not cheap either. The decoys, that's not cheap, right? You're you're talking, why would we dress ourselves with the body, you know, the body style of a brand new Corvette or a Lamborghini, right? And then put a Hyundai motor in it, yeah. right? It's, you're, you're putting a Honda Civic that. motor in a Lamborghini body and you're, it, what do you expect? Is it going to, you know what I'm saying? Like, what, what do you expect here? You can't, you can't do that. So it, it kind of is like, well, if you're going to go, we've, we've got dogs that are getting trained. Waterfowling 
is expensive. Let's let's be completely blatantly honest here. Waterfront is expensive. Yeah. You got waders, you got decoys, oh, you got decoy board. trailers, boats, the whole thing. Eighteen hundred dollar shotgun. Why are you going to go shoot the cheapest stuff you can find? Right? You pay. You scout your your butt off to to make sure you're on the X, especially up here. In Michigan, up in the upper Midwest, you're scouting, finding a feed, finding an X, or finding a good traffic line, flight line, right, to, to hunt under. You're going to get your blind brushed. You're going to have the best blind possible that you can get at that time that you can afford. You're going to get the bibs. You're going to get the decoy trailer and all of the gear that goes in it. Why skimp on something? A Denny Pittman. Yeah. I don't know if you know Denny. Yeah, yeah Denny's I know Denny a lot. Kid. Yeah, he's He's judged yeah, a lot Denny's of goose calling kid. contests. <laughs> yeah. And Denny was, you know, in the same way we saw here, he was seeing Missouri, no turkeys. I mean, you know, I've lived here for eight to nine years. My first moved out here. I sit on our deck and we hear gobbles every morning. And um, last two years, we saw a decline. And we killed, I've killed some over 30 pounds here. Uh, three or four, two years ago, Diane's, our four turkeys were killed. The average weight was 27 pounds. She filmed wow. me shooting a 29 and a quarter pound, uh, one with a bow. He had uh, five beards, 33 inches of beard and, I don't know, inch and a half spur. I sent it to Jason Hart, the pictures and stuff on the text. And he's like, dude. Did you get that certified scale? I said, well, it's a nice scale. I didn't take it to the yeah. meat locker, you know? And he <laughs> says, that is the number two turkey in the state of Iowa with a bow and 25th in the world. Where's that? I said, he's in the freezer to eat. <laughs> but I did say, but, you know, we have good birds here. And now last year, places that I'd get up in the morning and I know my spots where to go. And I'd sit there at dark, take my coffee and just count the gobbles and try to hear the deepest gobble and figure Dude, there was mornings last year. I never heard a gobble. Yeah. And, um, you know, Scott Rumble was down here last week, uh, pick up our dog and stuff. And Scott spent a day and he got up early in the morning, got on our deck. And of course, all the deer took off on the uh, new pond grass. But uh, he said there was, you could hear the gobbles just off our right there next to the pond goblin. So yep. hopefully we got that. And the DNR said it's going to make a great spot for a roost or uh, strutting yep. for the turkeys this year. I'm hoping that we start seeing. Uh, a comeback and you know i chose last year not to even shoot one um it was so bad and i, I think i quit during half of the season because i said it's just i want to try to let them see if we can get these turkeys back and figure out you know I've, some guys say they're bobcats and we do have a lot of bobcats and some guys you know i believe it myself i think it's the raccoons the guys yeah. in our area quit trapping them you know between the coons and possums so you know but that is, has been something that I had to see and face but, I think, um, you know, we're, we're talking about new hunter recruitment and all of that stuff. Right. And I think it's a very good transition point where you can, it, it, if we can show them how much we love chasing turkeys, we got to show them how much work it is to take care of those turkeys too. You know, absolutely. I mean, I've caught on a 150 yard stretch behind my house. I got a County drain back there. It's like a little ditch. It's, it fills up it. You know, it gets water in it when it then the snow melts off and, and it rains a ton and there's ducks that get in on it. And But it's a great spot for deer hunting. It's an even better spot to trap raccoons. In 150 yards, uh, my buddy Bill Hawk, you know Bill, 33 yeah. raccoons. 33 raccoons off of one 150-yard stretch. That's mainly off of four traps. And then wow. we've caught five coyotes in there too. So it's like, man, like, you got to think if a ki a coyote and a bobcat chasing down a wild turkey, right? I'll take the chances. Like, granted, yeah, we want to kill coyotes, we want to kill bobcats if we can, because um, they they ultimately can take out a lot of deer, especially fawns. You know, if we're deer hunters, we care about the ecosystem. You know, deer, um, we want to kill coyotes. Um, but you know, a wild turkey running from a coyote. Man, I know I can't sneak up on a turkey. Coyotes are <laughs> probably a little bit better, a little bit more successful than me, but I'll take those chances. You know, one-on-one, -on -one, a coyote versus a turkey. I'll take a hen turkey or a, a, a long beard, right? Now, you talk eight eggs in a nest that one raccoon can eat, right? Oh, overnight, absolutely. Overnight, eggs are gone. 
Um, and then you're talking, you get four to five hens in your block of woods that have eight you know, if you don't, if you're not taking care of possums, raccoons, or anything like skunks, even stuff that eats the eggs, then that's, that's what's going to be most detrimental on your turkey population. I mean, you, you probably experience the same with pheasants out there, ducks, ducks in the, I mean, we were at the Delta waterfowl show in August or not August, last July. And I was talking to one of the guys there and he's like, man, predation on the prairie pothole region is skyrocketing because there's no there's no fur trade there's no price on furs right so they don't nobody's out there trapping them well if we took the initiative say but i don't now we got to be careful because you're telling people to go trap raccoons you gotta you obviously have seasons you have areas that you can do it so please abide by those to the general public that's listening in right but like if you've got your own set of property you've got permission to hunt somewhere man Get a couple of dog proof traps and just put a put some dog kibble in there and some tuna fish and some marshmallows yeah. and see what happens. You will be insanely surprised. Um, I mean, I know guys in Kentucky that are uh, you know, they they had a weekend raccoon hunt and a guy and a group of guys in Kentucky, a team shot 994 raccoons in a weekend. Wow. In a weekend. <laughs> That's so, what's happening to the population. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, I mean, I lived in West Kentucky. I lived in Paducah. Um, that's about as far West Kentucky as you can get, um, other than you know uh, some other small towns. But they have uh, you hear it from all the turkey hunters. Like, Man, where the turkeys go? Where the turkeys go? You know, where have they gone? They're blaming farming practice, which I I would say that has a small factor into it. But I mean, you look at Michigan and Iowa, it's all row crop and the turkeys, turkey population is thriving, right? But in, the, in those, in those settings, but then you, you look on a weekend and one group of guys went out and killed 994 raccoons. And you're thinking, man, there's, there's an issue there that needs to oh, be addressed. They got to eat. Absolutely. A lot of guys, guys, man. I mean, I, I, I tell folks this all the time. If they're that, that complain about turkey populations is like, if you, chase turkeys with the 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 same if you took the same amount of energy you took when you chase turkeys and put it into trapping and taking care of the the egg eaters you would see it would be night and day difference on what you can see with turkey. I agree. it, it I agree is with that not just i mean just not the not just turkeys though you know you got to think of every single thing that the the raccoons eat i mean you're talking up here pheasants um ducks turkeys i mean same thing within iowa you know there's other states like down south kentucky tennessee you know they're like man why don't we see quail anymore and it's like well there's probably a reason for that you know you got yeah you got crop and and farm but you still have a lot of stuff getting eaten before it's even hatched you know I'll tell you what happened out here is when I moved in and you could drive and every, I go out every morning and evening I did my scouting route and um, I knew areas in the summer, dude, they, they, these ditches, there would be baby pheasants and pheasants and quail all the time crossing the road. I don't see that anymore, but yep. when this was, the pine was going I, and I knew, and I talked, to my DNR buddy about it, it was the avian predators and we were loaded with owls here and yep. my woods will just light up. <laughs> You know, they'll go and I've watched the owls, uh, especially the barred owls, will get on these fence posts and they were brazen. I could get out of the truck and they sit over these ditches and they're watching and just nailing a quail. And yeah. I've had rabbits that, that, you know, I watched them in right here in our yard in the dark, uh, killing rabbits and stuff. And I remember coming home from a show one time, coming down our dirt road and I looked and there was a big old horned owl trying to kill a rabbit on the side of the road. And uh, I kind of, just moved over a little bit just to make him go off the road and uh as soon as i come around i wasn't 10 yards later around the curve there was another owl killing yep. rabbit yep and so we've seen you know and i keep telling man these avian because then we're loaded with it we saw 26 eagles uh, oh yeah well you're right next to the refuge too so you probably and all those you know, especially and specs. yep <laughs> yep and yep. they're terrible you, you can walk back or in the woods and i'll find pieces of uh snow geese and feathers where they've dropped 
I was filming her turkey hunting last year, Diane, right um, over our down on our hill of our place that butts up to the refuge. And we were first night we were, I was filming her down there. And I heard this thing look like a squirrel and it sounded like a squirrel. And I looked up behind me, it was an immature eagle. I said, she and I both, didn't you die? Thought he was trying to imitate that eagle or that he was imitating a squirrel. And I was like, and then he, I finally tried to turn the camera and I do, he couldn't have been 15 yards and he flew off. So the next day we're down there filming again. And I said, Hey, die, here comes that eagle. He's coming up the finger from the lake, coming up yep. his finger. He's going to come right over. So as soon as he got right over, I mean, dude, right, I brought the camera up to filming and I freaked him out and he drops a duck. It <laughs> goes into the trees, hits the ground and I'm filming and I goes, it's a duck. It's still alive. Let's take it home and, and, <laughs> and heal. So Man. I went over there and I, okay, well, if she wants to take it home, we'll, we'll, it'd be cool. We'll, we'll heal him back. That's one that the eagle isn't getting. And I got over there. It was a coot. I put him back up the tree. <laughs> yeah, man, that that's a, it's a great point too. You know, we right now, I mean, I would say that eagles, the eagle population is probably eagles and, uh raptors in general you know they're at an all-time high i would think i don't i'm not a biologist or anything like that but i would i would think that you know you can't tell me that they're not, that you know you get a you get a group of 15 poults following a mom across a field you know especially like a bean field you know where the bean sprouts are right there you you can't tell me that a that eagle's not going to snatch them up i mean there's videos i mean hart's probably seen them too he's he's got videos there's uh, eagles coming in and trying to snatch up a long beard. So it's like, well, if they're, you know, if they'll go after a long beard, I mean, definitely go after a poult too. So um, granted, they're probably, you know, that's, that's not, I think that, you know, big picture item. Yeah, they can be included, but you start to hone in that target, you know, that needs to be, needs to be on those nest predators for sure. Uh-huh. Yeah. I appreciate your time here today, buddy. And folks, yeah. I hope that you youngins out there you listen to this out here, listen, talking about ethics. I mean, this is what Kyle, you know, and, and he has that reputation. And, you know, he's a great leader and great role model for the younger guys out there to follow. And, um, you know, he's he's uh, he's on the road. He's, you can catch him all the time on social media. But I hope you guys can listen and hear a lot of what we're talking about. And a lot of it is about giving back and caring. You know, yeah, we work really super hard for this, but it's about giving back and it's be ethical. It's about, you know, sh- you know, shooting the best you can shoot, but keeping in the same range and what we're out there for. It is, yeah. you know, we're not out there. And that's one of the things that, you know, social media, that's another whole podcast that, you know, seems like, you know, everybody wants to hunt with 12 guys so they can pile up the birds. And so it's all about pictures on social media. And that's not what it's about. Kyle, I thank you so much, folks. Thank if you, you like this, please subscribe to our our, our podcast, the George Lynch Hunting Podcast. Uh, you can go to legendarygearusa.com. It's le- and then YouTube is Legendary Gear USA with George Lynch. And or is it Legendary Gear with George Lynch? Legendary Gear with George Lynch. There you go. Legendary <laughs> George, what is it? The Apex website, apexammunition.com. Yeah, it's just www.apexammunition.com. Um, and then Apex, it's it's a little hard to find on social media because social media right now and ammunition and gun companies, they don't like each other. So it's uh you know at symbol apex oh, underscore ammunition uh on Instagram. Uh we put you know the owner, uh Jared Lewis, he's one of the founders. Uh, he's the CEO. Uh, he's tech, you know, he's technically my boss. He does a lot of the video and, and photography for us and he does an amazing jobs. So if you can check it out, check it out. Cause we try to, we try to portray everything we just talked about ethics, woodsmanship, um, and just the entire experience of why you go. So we try to really relate that to people. I think you'd enjoy it. He does a great job. You do have some bad of the bone pictures I've seen on social media. That's really cool. Had one with you, I remember. Didn't you have like a cigar and the ducks and shit? Yeah. Yep. Had the geese. I was smoking a cigar. And yep. 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 That's it, man. That's it. George, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you for, I know you're busy. Thank you for spending your time. And folks, always remember hunt safe, hunt smart, and may the good Lord be your guide. Well, I'll be out there, rain is shining. All a part of the great design 
Bring it on, I can never get enough Because that's what legends are made of